Hey y'all, it's Faiza here, and this is my second attempt at the Teach Me How quest. Um, so this quest um, resulted from my desire to improve myself um, as a disciplinary literacy teacher um, because in my ELA classroom, um, I tend to supplement the anchor literature um, with some informational texts from different disciplines. So sometimes I include um, relevant science articles, um, I include historical documents, I include artwork. And so what I wanted to do um, is to get better at um, teaching my students how to read these different types of texts because they come from different disciplines. Um, and so this quest um, resulted in me learning more about um, disciplinary thinking frames and I wanted to share with you um, some of those resources. Um, so I focus on teaching disciplinary literacy with what are called disciplinary thinking frames. Um, so what is a disciplinary thinking frame? Well, from my understanding, um, a disciplinary thinking frame is a way of approaching a disciplinary text. So um, it's a way of approaching a scientific text, and it's a way of approaching um, a historical document, and those should be different because those two disciplines are different. Um, so what I've decided to do and what I've read about um, as a positive is to kind of adopt a particular thinking frame um, for each discipline and have students sort of repeat the process of going through that thinking frame whenever they are reading a discipline, uh, disciplinary text. So whenever they're reading historical documents, you should use the same frame to help um, enhance their understanding of those documents. And when you're reading a science document, you should pull out that same thinking frame to help them read that scientific document. Um, so a more formal definition of a thinking frame is a representation intended to guide the process of thought, supporting, organizing, and catalyzing that process. So um, I've selected a thinking frame for history documents and a thinking frame for science documents that I'm going to have my students use all year to help them guide their process of thought in each discipline and to support, organize, and catalyze that process of thought in each discipline. Um, so in this video, I'm going to share with you the historical and scientific thinking frames that I'm adopting in my classroom. Um, so the first one, historical thinking frame, um, comes from the Stanford History Group, um, which Lee um, had us look at also this semester. And um, I've been using documents from here um, in the past, but I hadn't thought about really teaching them how to read the documents like a historian really properly um, until this year. And so um, what I've done is I've introduced to them um, kind of these, these thinking frames that the Stanford History Group um, comes up with, and now we're going to use these for every time we read historical documents. And I've done this three times already, and they really, um, I've noticed a big improvement in how they read historical documents. Um, and then this is a new one that I just introduced, um, and I talked to my um, the bio teacher at my school about um, adopting this scientific thinking frame. And so this one is called Stages of Investigation, Reading Like a Scientist. And so this thinking frame um, comes from Kings County, California. Their, their Office of Education developed it, and I thought it was really effective for reading a science article recently. And um, the science teacher at, at my school that I'm friends with said that this was um, a good one for me to use in the ELA class. Um, so the Stanford historian, uh, sorry, Stanford History Education Group um, has kind of four frames to use for um, reading historical documents. And basically what it is is a set of questions um, to help students work through the process of reading a historical document. Um, so what I do is I've kind of printed out the different frames. And each time we read a his, uh, historical document, we pull these out, we refer to them, we talk about how we're reading like a historian, and I tend, I plan, sorry, intend to make ones for um, reading science articles too, based on the one um, that I found and had my bio teacher um, confirm might be good for them. Um, so, 
um, sourcing means asking, having your students ask, you know, who wrote this document? What is the author's perspective? Why was it written? When was it written? Where was it written? Is it reliable? Why or why not? So each table group work focuses on this skill of sourcing. We go through these questions first. Then we switch to um, contextualizing when and where was the document created, what was different then, what was the same, how might circumstances in which the document was created affect its content. Then we move to close reading. We ask what claims does the author make, what evidence does the author use, what languages, words, phrases, images, symbols does the author use to persuade the document's audience, how does the document's language indicate the author's perspective, and then finally, we do corroboration, where we ask, what do other documents say? Do the documents agree? If not, why not? What are other possible documents? What documents are the most reliable? And so using these historical thinking frames, I've noticed significant improvements in the ability of my students to understand the significance of historical documents and to kind of read them carefully and situate them appropriately in terms of the discussions that we are, are having um, about them in connection to literature. Um, so that's the um, examples of the historical thinking frames that I've been using. And then um, the next strategy is the scientific thinking frames from Kings County. And so they kind of have four overarching um, frames. And I plan to, again, like I said, make little um, laminated um, papers for them to use each time they read a scientific document. And so one will be on context, which is when they are inferring and questioning when reading a scientific text. One is text, where they're actually trying to analyze and understand that text. One is impersonal subtext, where they're inferring and evaluating texts. And then the last one would be personal subtext, when they are synthesizing and judging a text. Um, so what's really cool is that Kings County um, Office of Education offers this um, kind of graphic organizer for the stages of investigation, reading like a scientist. And so um, I included an image of it here. And you can see some of the questions are like, for context, you ask, who is the author? What scientific expertise does the author have? Um, what areas of scientific research form the backdrop for the text? And then for the next stage, right, you're asking what scientific questions are raised by this text. Um, you know, in the personal subtext stage, you're asking um, what scientific question or dilemma should be explored further. And then the last stage, you're asking questions like um, how might the resolution of this scientific dilemma impact my life or the lives of others? So this graphic organizer really takes you through the phases of reading like a scientist. Um, so I would probably have them use this graphic organizer and then create um, kind of the guiding questions for each stage of reading like a scientist. Um, so I really liked this thinking frame, and I, there are others out there for you to use, um, but I just wanted to share this one. Um, so this brings me to the end of the quest. Hopefully um, you find those strategies valuable for your classroom. Um, and so really that's just my two cents on the topic. And um, I borrowed those two cents from people that are smarter than me. Um, so I suggest going back to the source of the Stanford History Education Group or the um, Kings County um, Office of Education to learn more about these thinking frames. Thanks for watching.